Hey everyone, Howie Fisher from Fisher's Flies. Thanks for checking in today. Today I'm going to be tying a classic pattern, the Clouser Minnow by Bob Clouser. So for the hook on this today, I'm going to be using an A-Rex uh, hook. This is actually a new hook by them. It's called an A-Rex X0750. It's a universal stinger. Uh, they call it an XO because it's a crossover hook, as they call it. So it has multiple applications. Uh, for the eyes on this, I'm going to be using just uh, dumbbell eyes in small, white, and then for thread, I'm going to be using Semperfly Classic Waxed Thread in 3-0. Uh, I like this 3-0 for this pattern because it helps you to build up um, just a good thread base, especially for the eyes, and then also uh, does, especially when you contrast the color, it makes for nice ribbing uh, on the bottom section of the, the fly for the bucktail. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started right behind the hook eye and I'm going to lay down a nice uh, thread base and you don't need to go all the way back on this thread base. This is just going to be for the eyes. If you go ahead and build up yourself a little thread base, it helps uh, to secure your eyes. You can even uh, tie some some notches in there to help that or, or build up a little bit of a bigger bulb underneath where you're going to secure the eyes in. So for placement on the eyes, I like to place them about the length of the eyes from the beginning of the hook. When I'm tying a bunch of these, as you can see here, I've got the first one that I tied up. Um, as you can see, the eyes on this one were just a little bit further back than I like them uh, to match the, the previous one that I tied. So I'll take that first one that I tied and um, use it as a comparison for every single fly, especially when I'm tying a bunch of them. That way they're consistent, the, the eyes in the same place. So you can see that eye placement's a little bit better. So once I've got it where I want it, uh, so to secure the, the eyes at first, what I'll do is I'll do three or four X wraps uh, in the same direction, make sure I, they're where I want them, put super glue on top, and then I go around the base of the eyes, and then I do some more figure eights. Going around the base of the eyes is super important because it pulls the thread wraps in uh, and just cinches them down even more. Once I feel like I've got them secure, I'm going to take my thread now and I'm going to work it back to the hook bend. This is actually important um, because doing this helps your deer hair not to spin around the hook or your bucktail to spin around the hook when you're tying it in, especially that bottom portion. So for the bottom portion of this fly, I'm going to be using a uh, purple bucktail. This is actually a custom color from a guy named Colin Nash. You can find him on Instagram or Facebook. This is an uh, electric grape. Just a really bright, vibrant uh, purple that I really like. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out a little bit. Uh, I actually grabbed a little bit too much here, I think. So I'm going to pull out, uh, pull some out, make it a little bit more sparse. So now that I've got it where I want it, uh, I'm just going to clip, cut the ends, um, make those ends square. It just makes tying them in a lot easier. So once I got them square, um, this is probably the hardest part of this fly is getting these to tie down. Not too long, but not too short. As you can see here, it, it takes a minute. Um, so the best way really is to to do a couple loose wraps and then really cinch them down. And you don't have to really truly cinch down very hard because these these fibers are, as long as you get them good in the front, they're really not going anywhere, especially once you make this wrap. So after I get them done and tied them in front of the eyes, I'm going to move the, the um, thread behind the eyes and then cinch down that, that clump of hair. Once I've got it with a couple wraps, I'm going to start making open spirals backwards towards the hook bend. Once I get there, I'm just going to do a few wraps loosely around the end of the bucktail, and then I'm going to wrap it back. And that just creates some, some nice segmentation on this fly. You really want to make sure that on that body you're not pinching down too hard or, or cinching down too hard because it'll flare out that bucktail. For the flash on this fly, I'm going to go uh, a little bit away from the traditional route. I'm actually going to use lateral scale. 
Uh, again, really like the fishiness of this, this material. Uh, if you've used it on other flies, you know, uh, just look killer in the water. So I take one full strand, cut it in half, and then fold it over the, uh, the thread and tie it on. So that gives me four strands, essentially. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the fly. So again, fold one piece in half, cut it, and then fold it around the thread and tie it in. If you misalign your your thread or your 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 tips a little bit, it creates kind of a little bit of a natural taper. Each each fiber moves on its own. Um, looks really good in the water. It doesn't look all like it's exactly the same. So you can either do this step at the end or uh, in two parts. I like to do it in two parts. So I'm just going to coat these thread wraps with some Solarez. You can also use head cement if you'd like. Uh, this will drastically increase the durability and longevity of this fly. Um, so again, I'm using Solar as bone dry, just a super thin coat, hit it with some UV, harden it up, make sure those thread wraps are nice and secure, nice and protected. And next is actually going to be the last step, so I'm going to use Bucktail again here. This is just black. So again, I'm going to take out a small chunk. And I'm going to cut the tips like I did with the first chunk after measuring it. And then I'm going to do the same thing. You don't have as much room to work with this clump uh, as you do the first clump. So a couple tricks, you can either put super glue down first or get a couple thread wraps down and then um, put super glue on. As you can see here, it's super easy to get that that thread to just slide off the front of that clump no matter what you do. Um, so again, if you want, you can put a, just a small dab of super glue down uh, and that will help those thread and, and that, um, that bucktail just stay where you want it to. Again, the best way to, to do it without that is to um, do a few, not super loose wraps, but not super tight either, just right in the middle. Get it where you want it, then start cinching down. Um, again, as you work your way back uh, on this head, um, if you want to put the super glue on now, you can. And again, it'll just try and help keep everything in place. Even though you've had this secure, like I do now, um, if you cinch down too hard or, or cinch down the wrong way, it can actually just kick all of those fibers uh, out of the back of that thread dam, as you can kind of see is happening here, which is fine because I. I had too much, uh, a little bit too much deer hair anyways. Uh, but as you work your way back further towards the eye, you, you want to make sure that that bucktail is in the position you want it in before you go back further or back too far. And also, again, just like with the tail, you don't want to wrap those last thread wraps too hard because if you really cinch that thread down, it's going to flare that bucktail out and it'll still probably fish, um, but you start losing that a little bit more of that bait fish profile if you get that flared out too much. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and whip finish now. Uh, hit this head with some Solarez. If you don't like the position of the deer hair on top, what you can do here is uh, apply a little bit of Solarez or, or UV resin uh, back into the hair and then cure it while holding it and that'll keep it uh, kind of down and flat but i also like to hit the thread wraps or the the hair in this case over the eyes again just make that hair more durable because uh, that is exposed especially if you have a fish with teeth even if it's a trout or a bass they, they do have some some smaller tinier teeth or, or that sandpaper uh, lip that bass have but just going to go ahead and coat this head with some uv solarez bone dry real thin and again like i mentioned i'm, I'm putting a little bit into the hair here. I'm going to hold it down and back and I'm going to hit it with that UV light and all that's going to do is just keep that that um, that bucktail in the place that I want it to a little bit better. So there you have it everyone. This is again a classic fly, the uh, the Clouser minnow, uh, multi-species fly uh, killer for for salt water, for bass, uh, even in trout in certain circumstances. Um, yeah, go ahead and tie them up again, fish them, let me know what you think.